Okay, so as someone working in counter violence extremism, what I found interesting about the report is that it comes at it more from uh, the community level, from a society level, building a positive um, social narrative will effectively inoculate communities from violent extremism. So it's not targeting those that have been radicalised, it's not targeting those who really want to commit acts of violence, but it's working on creating um, a theological and social narrative that inherently and intrinsically um, creates a resilience towards radicalisation, from radicalisation. Um, it's very idealistic, it's a very positive way of doing it, and I think it's the start of a journey where if this was implemented in communities, then in a generation there will be such a sea change um, that that positivity will, will win the war. And effectively, by being so positive in your social narrative, you effectively don't give any room for the extremists or the radicalizers to exploit young people. So really that, that sense of um, a community-wide inoculation, for me that's the strength of something like this particular publication and the Hizmet approach. In terms of weaknesses, I think as I read the report, I was very much reminded of the stories I would hear about the old days where you could leave your front door open, leave your back door open, and in a whole community nobody would, would burgle your house. Um, and it kind of sounded like an era that we would all want to kind of reminisce to and, and hark back to. And this is kind of the same, metaphorically, philosophically, the same kind of approach. The only danger with an approach like that is it only takes that one person to suddenly look up and realise, actually, all these houses are unlocked. We could make a killing here. Um, and once that happens, everyone will shut the doors um, and all the locks will go up as well. So you, it reverses the situation. So in isolation, I don't think this is the only solution. I think it has to work alongside an appropriate and proportionate security measure. But certainly from the ground up, from the grassroots up, and in terms of cohesion, this is the approach and the long-term approach that communities, um, NGOs, and even governments should be looking at, um, but also with the support of um, a, a very targeted security approach as well for those individuals that might want to burgle the houses for want of a better metaphor. One of the things in particular I did like about it is there's a lot of organisations out there who purport to be helping Muslim communities, uh, but seem to divert an awful lot of their energy into attacking counter-extremism strategies directly. Um, then on top of that, rather than putting out positive messages, they put out fear, they put out Islamophobia, um, creating anxiety within Muslim communities that, that, that isn't necessarily warranted, and actually end up making the problem worse. And then when you look at a narrative of, say, an organisation like ISIL, who are promoting utopia, if you've got groups within the UK scaremongering, promoting fear, put the two together and what you have is a fairly toxic cocktail uh, and a fairly um, enigmatic draw for why people might then want to go to ISIL as an alternative. What this does is actually look at creating a positive approach with Muslim communities and instilling that positive approach and diverts its energy and its resources into um, a pro-social and proactive positive activism. And that's what's been missing, I think, from a lot of the groups we see here in the UK.